is Professor Furious Grimm, and welcome to the Grimm Playhouse. In these hard economic times, we all could use some extra money. Well, that is the case for a young lady named Julie. She has decided to take a little job out in the country. What she does not know is, it will be a job she will never forget. So turn off the lights and turn up the volume. For tonight's tale is called The Babysitter. It is just after 8 o'clock. Julie drives down the dirt road. The sun sets just over the horizon, giving the sky a very beautiful orange tint. The country house is on the horizon. She drives towards it with anticipation because she is anxious to get extra money, for it is very much needed before she goes back to school in the fall. She drives on to the dirt driveway and gets out. The house is mid-sized and has two levels. She knocks on the door and Helen, the mother of whom she spoke with on the phone the day before, answers with a very broad smile. Ah, good, you made it, dear. I was hoping you wouldn't have too much trouble finding us, Helen states. No, not too bad, Julie replies. Helen leads Julie to the living room. She introduces her to her eight-year-old daughter, Katie. Katie is sitting on the floor watching television with her back to them. This is my daughter Katie. She is well behaved and will not be any trouble for you, I promise. She keeps to herself. She enjoys her TV shows. So you shouldn't have much trouble from her, states Helen. Katie doesn't acknowledge either one of them. She just continues to watch the screen. Helen walks Julie to the kitchen and explains that little Katie is a naturally quiet child who is very shy. She will not need much. Just let her continue to watch TV for another hour, then send her to bed. All Julie will have to do is point to the clock on the wall in the living room, and Katie will know it is bedtime. Helen reassures Julie that the child is very sweet and well-behaved. After Helen leaves, Julie takes out a book that is in her purse and puts it on the kitchen table. She walks back into the living room to see little Katie still watching television. Hey, what are you watching, Katie? Katie continues to sit and watch with a little smile on her face. She did say she was shy. Julie then goes back to the kitchen, sits down, and begins to read her book. 
9.30 arrives. It is little Katie's bedtime. Julie puts down her book and begins to get up to go towards the living room. She is startled when she sees Katie already standing in the doorway. Julie smiles at her. Katie smirks back briefly. After a brief moment, Katie leaves the kitchen. She heads upstairs, taking her time. An hour passes. Julie goes upstairs. Katie's bedroom is at the end of the hall. It is very quiet. Julie walks down to the door and knocks. There is still silence. Julie slowly turns the doorknob and opens the door. The lights are off. However, Katie is sitting on the side of the bed facing her. It is so dark, her face can't be seen. Julie takes a couple of steps towards little Katie. Katie? Katie, are you okay? Katie, what's wrong? I don't... Katie flies off the bed and grabs Julie, causing her to crash against the wall. Her teeth are now like a wild animal. She grabs on to Julie. Her claws clutch her back, digging into her skin. She bites down hard on Julie's neck. Both of them fall to the floor. Katie gets on top of Julie and tries to bite her face. Julie screams and reaches for anything she can. She grabs a pin that's nearby and quickly stabs Katie in the neck. the child flies off. <laughs> A bloody and dazed Julie gets up slowly. She goes to the door hoping to get the hell out only to see Helen standing in the way. <laughs> Like Katie, her eyes are black, and her teeth are long and sharp, as she smiles. I'm so sorry, dear. I'm sure you can understand there was no way I could tell you the truth. But she needs to feed. Every season she must feed. Please try to understand. She is a growing child. You did good, though. You almost made it out. Much better than the other sitters. Katie lunges again and knocks Julie to the ground. She plops down on top of her and rips open her chest. <laughs> she smashes her rib cage and rips out her intestines. The child gobbles them down, not so much as letting a piece hit the floor. Easy now, easy, not so fast, dear, Helen states. You'll choke. Save some for later. 
Katie smiles as blood and pieces of flesh drop from around her bloody mouth. Julie's now lifeless eyes remain open, staring up at the ceiling. It is safe to say she will not be getting paid for her services this night. One should never underestimate the appetite of a small child. She went in trying to get some extra money and turned out to be the main course. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us. My name is Professor Furious Grimm and I bid you farewell and to beware the undead and the spirits of the night. And as always, I will be sure to leave the lights off for you. <laughs>